Formerly aware that terror can strike virtually anytime, anywhere. That's why the hospital staff at Stony Brook University is now reaching out to train staff and students at the university and elsewhere on how to administer first aid to victims of violence. This is your gauze. I will squeeze, and we can see we're bleeding out. At Stony Brook University, trauma surgeons are teaching the life saving lessons they've learned through years of medical training, such as the proper way to plug a wound with gauze. The blood and limbs are fake, but the potential that these civilians will someday need to use this technique is quite real. You like never know, even though you're on campus and you think that everything's safe, especially with like what you see in the news nowadays with like school shootings. Um, I think it's just good to be. Prepared. Following the latest campus attack at Ohio State University that left 11 people injured, Stony Brook physicians are taking this kind of civilian training to local schools and government offices. A second to minutes can mean the difference between life and death. Um, arterial bleeding is very brisk, and patients can lose a lot of blood very, very quickly. Pull the tourniquet tight like this, as tight as possible. Medical staff demonstrated how to apply a tourniquet just above a wound while twisting it tighter to restrict the blood flow. In an emergency, if there's no tourniquet available, you can use many items like perhaps your belt, an ID tag, or even your tie. Students took turns with the hands-on training, overcoming any squeamishness they felt about probing wounds. It would be hard, but at the moment, I would definitely use the skills. God forbid this ever happens. Um, you know, I think the training is pretty important to, for everybody to know, not just us. And indeed, it's life-saving training these civilians can now teach their family and friends. And joining us now is paramedic Colby Rowe from the Stony Brook Trauma Center. Welcome, and uh, you're going to show us a few life-saving tips, and uh, I'm going to be rolling up my sleeves to be Great. your guinea pig here. Great. Hopefully, we'll all learn something, but I don't need that one. No, this, this one. will be fine. This okay. Will be fine. So, uh, you know, first of all, tell us about the program that you've set up through what Stony Brook Trauma Center is that part of the hospital? Correct. Who are you Stony Brook. Where are you going with Absolutely. this? Absolutely, through Stony Brook Medicine uh, and specifically the Trauma Center within, um, we're actually taking the program, which is a national campaign called Stop the Bleed. Um, out locally, hopefully across Long Island. Specifically, we're looking at getting it into the schools as much as possible. The program Stop the Bleed came as a result of the Hartford Consensus, which was a position statement, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, after the Sandy Hook Elementary School uh, tragedy. That changed the world for absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, parents and school administrators, the last thing they ever want to think about is somebody coming and making a demonstration like this. Agreed. Agreed. But now the, that's like but common it's sense. Become, uh, it's become uh, you know, a daily part of our lives that we have to be prepared for something like this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even this is completely a fake limb with fake blood that we right. have here. But, you know, it's so realistic looking. When we first put the story together, uh, everybody couldn't look at it because it looked like it was real blood coming out. So we're just going to use water, right? Right. Absolutely. But this is the, the fake blood you use and this here is what like a uh, meant to be this like is a thigh I believe absolutely absolutely this is meant to be a, a thigh that has sustained a bullet wound uh, so high caliber bullet wound somebody's been shot in their leg in their thigh exactly and the thigh you'd be surprised can hold up to 40 percent of uh, an adult's blood volume most of your blood right yeah a good portion of it's it. a major artery a good involved, portion right? of it and with that blood goes oxygen with that blood goes clotting factors that can help your blood clot so what's the number one important thing if you see that God forbid somebody's actually been shot in front of you number one one most important thing is to protect yourself, of course, and to make sure that you're safe. Uh, and then we do kind of the ABCs approach, you know, getting help, and then stopping the bleed. Well, show us how to stop the bleed because gauze is very important in this, right? Sure, absolutely. Gauze, if you have it, is great to have, specifically if there's a commercially available gauze that has um, some sort of uh, material in it, such as this, called the um, quick clot. This is impregnated with a material called kaolin, which is naturally occurring within the earth around the world. Is that what, uh, if you buy gauze anywhere, it'll have that? Not necessarily. So this is more for medical professionals? It is actually more, uh, comes from the, mostly from the military experience and tactical police work. And what the kaolin does is it actually speeds up the clotting process. So if somebody maybe has, you know, takes 10 minutes to clot, this could make it happen as soon as three minutes. Which is really critical because you're bleeding out. So Absolutely. Now, I think most people would look and see somebody been shot and they'd grab something, wrap it around, stop the bleeding, but in some ways right. that could make it worse, couldn't it? Absolutely. If you don't do this first. Right. So and show us what you would do. Absolutely. So let's say we're using water for, for yeah. now, but if we were bleeding through this, you know, it would be under pressure, so it would be spurting. Arterial blood is right. spurting in nature, and it pulsates. And you're already seeing it. Yeah, and there's a little there. bit of a tinge red still there. But what we would do um, is, if we don't have this, we take anything that we have, 
You could I, use it could, anything. It could be my T-shirt. It could be your tie. Even if it's not sterile. Absolutely. You know, the, the trauma center will take care of that. The surgeon will manage to take can care deal of that. deal with an out. infection later, but stopping the bleeding Precisely. is most important. If we do have something like gauze or, you know, something, uh, you know, narrow like this, we could take this and the idea is that we feed it, hold it in one hand, and with the other, we just start packing the wound. Uh, and I understand that this is, and we do have Not some... easy to do if some, it really happened. Exactly. Yeah. You know, issues with uh, the, the curriculum itself where maybe some people don't want to see these kinds of things. Yes, you're right. So we always do the, give them that warning that it is graphic in nature. The point is, is that we pack this and pack this until the bleeding stops. That is our end point. So you mean you keep pushing it in? You don't just put a little bit on the top? I would push, push this that whole thing in. All right, so I'm just going to feed it to my other hand, keep on feeding it. You might notice this blue line there down the middle of this particular kind of gauze, and that makes that's because it's radio opaque. We can actually do an X-ray just to see if there's any gauze left in the wound. Um. But the idea is that we stuff this in there so it expands up against both severed ends of a blood vessel. So eventually, the bleeding will stop. Correct. Now, in some cases, you might actually need to use a tourniquet, though. And right. You've brought one here, and then we've got some other items that I'm sure you'll explain. Show us what a real tourniquet looks like. Sure. So this is a a real tourniquet. Um, Stretch it out and open it exactly up. Exactly what uh, the military <laughs> medics are using, and we learn a lot from military medicine, just like we did in Vietnam. What wounds can this be used for? So we're looking to save extremity wounds. Right. All right. Um, because they're survivable wounds. You have a lot of blood vessels right. going through your legs, through your arms, and if we have a nice, you know, our, a good arterial bleed that is spurting a lot of blood, we can lose a lot of it. So if, let's say you had a laceration, a deep laceration here, I right. packed it, I put direct pressure on it, we still do direct pressure. The idea is I'm going to go a few inches above that wound, and I'm going to apply this as tight as possible. If I can't get it around, I could just separate it. But what I'm going to do here is if you can hold your arm out for me. Oh. I'm going to pull down and go a little bit tight, not all the way around, and then I'm going to take the clip, the rod here, out of the clip and twist. So and that's gonna, importing the twisting. It's absolutely and clearly this important. works beautifully. And this does what? Cuts off... Uh, that cuts off the, cir the circulation. And it's better than tying something just around in a knot because this is getting circumferential pressure all the way around. Now, the likelihood that someone would have something, can you remove it? Absolutely. That someone would have, not that it hurts or anything, but I wanted to show that there are other options. Because the possibility of the situations we're talking about, you're going to be nowhere near these items. So what Correct. could you use instead? Some of these, right? Well, what do you have here? Fortunately, there are some places, public places, schools in particular, that have invested in material like this. Um, fortunately, some in our own neighborhoods. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if you don't have that, you're going to have to use something like anything you can find, right. whether it's tie. Every, lots of teachers wear ties to work, right? So potentially we could use this tie. You do the same thing. Absolutely, absolutely. A couple that of inches be above. With, uh, we could use tag? lanyards. I mean, the wider, the better a for belt? the pressure. Wow, right. look and at I'll that. I'll tie another knot. And you may be wondering what this is for. And what's with the ruler, yes. So whether it's something long that we can use to simulate or be the rod that I was using to twist. So I'm gonna put that there. If anyone was ever a Boy Scout, this might look familiar. Oh, look All right, and I'm going to twist. And okay. once I get the pressure... Yeah, definitely cut it off. Right. You're and definitely the, a paramedic. And what's the end point? The end point is when the bleeding stops. So that's the key. And look, folks, you could use... If you were, hope you're never in this situation, but you could use a belt. You could use a, an ID tag, ribbon. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, as you can see, even a scarf. I was looking for it. Even a scarf would even work because the material is even strong. A scarf. Many of the classes I've done, there's many of the ladies are wearing them in the class. So, great example. So, you know, and this kit here, this is what you ideally would want to have in, in your place, right? Is right. this something that you're giving to the, the places where you go? We would like to be. Just tell us what's in there. Sure. In this kit, this is just a, uh, a Show it up to the camera commercial for a kit containing some of the clotting agent. Here, let's right. move this to the camera sure. so I can see it. So this contains some of the clotting agents, contains tourniquets, um, it contains gloves for protecting yourself. So everything you would need that we just talked about. Yeah, absolutely. And you're seeing these pop up within public areas in some places across the country. What's been the reaction to the places you're going where you talk about something as horrible as somebody being shot, killed, stabbed? Uh, it's, it's a grim thought, but it's been an overwhelmingly positive reaction. Well, you could be saving lives. In fact, we believe you are. Colby Rowe, paramedic with the Stony Brook Trauma Thank Center. You. Thank you very much for the life-saving tips and education, and we'll be right back. Thank you. And the uh, circulation is returning now, I think. <laughs> <laughs>